Hello, everyone. We are Group Eight. We are going to present the following three papers. This paper explores lottery, humor, and memes on Twitter. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Chen Weizhi. Today, I'm going to introduce a paper published on KDD Twenty Two titled "Finding Meta Winning Ticket to Change Your Memo." This paper mainly explores how to apply the lottery ticket hypothesis to find sparse subnetworks called winning ticket, and train the network in the manner of meta learning, showing how it can lead to rapid learning with less computational cost. The idea is from a best paper published on IQIO nineteen. They suggest finding the network in the way of playing the lottery, which is pretty interesting to me. Lottery ticket hypothesis states that a randomly initialized dense neural network contains subnetworks that can be chained in isolation to achieve comparable performance to the original dense network. These subnetworks are called winning tickets. In traditional supervised learning. LTH requires iterative chaining and pruning to identify winning ticket, which sounds like a very heavy work. So here comes meta learning. Meta learning is a machine learning method that enables model to learn and adapt to new tasks from few data. Memo is an optimization-based meta learning algorithm. That allows models to share knowledge across different tasks and achieve optimal performance with few gradient updates. The core idea of Memo is to find an initial parameter that can be quickly and effectively fine-tuned on multiple tasks. So, what actually are meta-winning tickets? The main difference between regular and meta-winning tickets are the way they are identified. A meta-winning ticket can be used as a starting point for meta-learning and achieve comparable performance to the original one. However, identifying meta-winning ticket requires extensive computational resources due to the large search base of possible subnetworks. To fix that, the author proposed primary mask ticket by. Identifying meta-winning ticket early in the chaining process using primary mask. These masks are identified by monitoring all mask location in the first layer of the backbone until they stabilize. As long as a primary mask is identified, it is used to initialize a subnetwork for meta learning. Since this approach only focuses on the first layer. And doesn't really have to complete the chaining and pruning. It reduces the computational cost of identifying winning ticket and enables efficient chaining on resource limited devices. In the experiment, they apply three different methods to extract the winning ticket. The following figures shows the accuracy related to the pruning rate on the common backbone. CNN and ResNet. As you can see, the blue line with a circle dot, which is meta-winning ticket, has always performed the best. To conclude, this is the first paper that explores the lottery ticket hypothesis in the context of meta learning, and finds meta-winning ticket that can be meta-chained to few short classification accuracy. Comparable to the original backbone, this paper also proposes a scheme for early detection of a meta-winning ticket based on inter- and intra-layer patterns among different meta-winning tickets, and decide a lightweight solution to search the meta-winning ticket. Finally, the proposed method can reduce the computational cost. And improve the performance of meta-learning algorithm such as Memo on various IoT device and few sharp classification benchmarks. Next, 
I'm going to introduce Comprehend Language Models Understand Chinese Humor, and it is a paper from WSDM 2023. This is my outline for reference. Humor is a complex language pattern that requires a deep understanding of semantics and cultural context. Earlier methods relied on shallow features, limiting their ability to recognize or generate humor. Modern approaches use pre-trained language models, which is called PLMs, like BERT, but their true understanding of humor remains unproven. Chinese humor, more challenging and less studied than English, is the focus of the author's research on PLMs' understanding of humor. This paper evaluates POM's understanding of Chinese humor, provides a comprehensive Chinese humor dataset, and proposes humor-related tasks with evaluation steps to study the impact of fine-tuning and additional knowledge on POM's performance. Now, let's explore the four proposed humor-related tasks. The first one is humor recognition. It involves determining if a given text is humorous or not, based on its literal meaning. And the second one is humor classification. The goal is to categorize a text into different types of humor. First type is harmonic. It means the words with similar pronunciation but different meanings. For example, in figure B, the word ji fu it means pay quarterly, and the word ji fu it means the father-in-law. And the second type is ambiguous. It means the words with multiple meanings, like the shi fen in Chinese can mean both ten score and vary. And the third type is incongruous. It means the text may have some semantic incongruity. And the third task is humor level classification. This task aims to classify the level of humor in a text as weak, median, or strong. And the last task is punchline detection. This task requires identifying whether the ending sentence in a pair of texts is a punchline or a normal statement. And let's talk about the Chinese humor dataset. The collective dataset for humor text consists of four sub-datasets. Humor recognition, type classification, and level classification datasets are sourced from release data and verified manually. Humorless data for recognition is collected from various platforms. And punchline detection datasets include punchline and normal ending sentences. Punchlines are manually extracted and determined by voting while normal sentences are generated by text generator and evaluated by human assessors. At the end of the method, the author proposed three steps to evaluate the Chinese humor comprehension ability of POMs. The first step is to evaluate the original or fine-tuned POMs. Punchline detection involves similarity calculation using sentence-level embeddings. If a similarity score of the pair exceeds 0.5, the ending is considered normal and the other texts are treated as classification problems. The second step involves evaluating knowledge-enhanced POMs, like pinging embeddings, is incorporated into the model. Implicitly fusion, like B1, adds the word embedding with extra knowledge before passing through the POM, while explicit fusion, like B2, first passes through the POM and then adds the additional knowledge embeddings. Notably, the authors imply CNN to embed Chinese pinyin. The final step is to interpret humor understanding. The authors first generate saliency maps, which highlight the most important input words of the output. They test the effectiveness by masking the top three salient words and observing the impact on the POM's performance, and stability by putting tokens at the end of the input text to observe the correlation between changes in prediction saliency scores. Through the three evaluation steps, the author assessed the impact of fine-tuning and external knowledge on POM's humor comprehension abilities. They also used saliency maps to evaluate the interpretability of POM's understanding of humor. In the experiment, the author evaluated different sort of POMs for Chinese humor comprehension, where ZAs represents the performance of the original POMs. FT represents the results after fine-tuning on the Chinese humor dataset, and KFT represents the results after fine-tuning with pinyin as external knowledge using explicit fusion. Fine-tuning on the humor dataset led to significant improvements in all four tests, with humor recognition, type classification, level classification, and punchline detection showing notable enhancements of approximately 68%, 72%, 40%, and 91% respectively. Incorporating external knowledge, 
specifically using pinning in the fine tuning process, further boosted the model's performance. Other forms of knowledge and implicit fusion did not yield additional improvements. This finding highlights the effectiveness of fine tuning and the benefits of incorporating external knowledge in enhancing PLM's understanding of Chinese humor. Moving on to the saliency map visualization, we have A1 and B1 for the original POM results, A2 and B2 for the fine-tuned results. Darker green indicates higher saliency, while red boxes highlight the top three salient words. Initially, the POMs capture less useful clues like punctuation marks. However, after fine-tuning, they captured more relevant clues. These experiments confirm that fine-tuned POMs can understand humor by capturing important clues. To sum up, this paper constructed a comprehensive Chinese humor dataset for four humor-related tasks and that systematically investigates the humor understanding ability of PLMs with a designed comprehensive framework with three evaluation steps and four evaluation tasks. Now we are going to introduce this paper called a multi-model framework for the identification of vaccine critical means on Twitter. Here today's outline. Introduction. Vaccine relays mean on Twitter are a growing concern for public health communication. They can spread misinformation and undermine vaccination efforts. In this paper, the author presents a new multi-model framework for identifying vaccine critical means on Twitter. Our framework combines visual and textual information to improve accuracy and F1 score compared to baseline method. Slide present the overall architecture of the model proposed by the author. This can be broadly divided into four parts. The first part is text representation learning. The second part is image representation learning. The third part is attentive representation learning. And the last part is classification. Use GNN to extract comprehensive text representation. In creating graph, unique words become vertex and their relationship form H. Words feature initialized vertex embeddings, which involves as individual graph for each document convey word interaction. GetGNN is used to extract word node representation in each graph. This node receives and incorporates neighbor information, updating their representation. In the readout operation, word nodes merge to form a graph level text representation, crucial for the final prediction. Besides, averaging word feature, mixed pooling is used highlighting that each word has meaning. The resultant text representation will undergo further refinement via self-attention in the attentive representation learning model. Is image representation learning. In this model, the author adopts ResNet 50 as the underlying architecture for extracting image features. The global image features are derived from the final adaptive average pooling layer of the ResNet 50 model. Additionally, the, the author obtained local image feature by extracting information from an intermediate convolution layer and converting them into feature vector for each of the M image subregions. The resulting image representation encompasses both global and local feature which are subsequently utilized in the attentive representation learning module through self-attention and intramodularity attention mechanism. Let us take a look at the third part of the overall architecture. The paper focuses on single modality-based attention, using self-attention mechanism to highlight vital textual and visual feature. Textual features are fed into the self-attention mechanism using a graph-based text representation, emphasizing key textual components. Local image features are input to the attention module, capturing significant visual elements. Next, an intra-modality attention module combines self-attended local image feature with global image accept. In Tending to merge local image detail with the mean overall meaning. It was observed that the text in means is more crucial for some, while the image is paramount in identifying certain means related to vaccine criticism. To tackle this, the author devised their cross-modality 
phase attention fusion through two main steps, generating modality attention and concatenating weighted feature. Inspired by human learning strategy with the meeting example, their approach aims to discover similarity between example within each class and compare them with example from different classes. To accomplish this, they introduce a con contrastive learning loss that effectively capture the similarity between example belonging to the same class and contrast them with example from the other classes in the invading space. This methodology allows the algorithm to make better use of the available label information. Furthermore, they utilize the representation obtained from the single modality based attention and incorporate them into the cross entropy loss, which aids in further training and optimization of the model. Experiments. Their frameworks achieved an F1 score of 84% on the VEX mean data set, which is an improvement over the best baseline method. They also conduct ablation study, and the study suggests that both modalities are important for identifying vaccine critical means, and that the attention mechanism helps to focus on relevant parts of the means. Overall, the results demonstrate the effectiveness of their proposed framework in this task. The final part is result. The model will return the predict which has three labels, and here are these three labels defined. As you can see, the model will according the image and text to predict the final result, like this picture. That's the end of our presentation. We are group 8. Thanks for your attention. Good luck to your finals and have a nice day.